It's just a science project. Silent breed is people! You know, a doctor friend once said the same thing to me. Frankenstein was his name. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! That sounds like something out of science fiction. Please explain to me the scientific nature of the whammy. We live in a spaceship, dear. So? Yes, science! Program complete. Enter when ready. All right, we all set? Okay. Penny, you there? Oh, yes, yes. Sorry, I was just like <laughs> silent. She's so waiting. chill. She's so chill. She doesn't need to talk. I feel like I have to keep waking Penny up. <laughs> I'm sorry. You sort of do. I'm sorry. All good. Um, I think we should get started then. We all set? <laughs> I love it when I say, are we all set? And I don't hear any it's response. Like, silence. It's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I guess, I guess. Like, I don't want to overcommit here. <laughs> all right. Hello and welcome to episode 314 of Science... No, 315, isn't it? Bloopers. <laughs> that's a pretty shitty blooper. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the that's, same, but didn't Bloopers go, say. if that's the best we can offer. That's gonna Seriously, be there haven't been many bloopers this year. We must be getting so professional. <laughs> yeah, <Hello>? that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Ed Brown, and on the show today is Penny Dumsday. Hello. Lucas Randall. Lucas Randall. Are you not, you're not getting me? No. You you, I am now. What? Oh. <laughs> we only hear you when you're not you saying get... something relevant to the show. <laughs> oh, great. No. Excellent. We just um, missed the bit howdy. where you said hi. Thanks. Good. That'll be fun to clean up. I'm Ed Brown and with me is Dr. Shane Joseph. Oh, hello. Sorry. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Who has apparently <laughs> forgotten the very first I, things he has to do on I the show. Just, I just tuned out one more time. Uh, oh, God. Sorry, start again. Sorry about that. I mean, <laughs> man, fuck it out. <laughs> this is uh, going to be one of those shows. Yeah, oh, it really is. I sorry, can tell. I'm, <laughs> I'm so out of it. It's not funny. I, I think we all kind of are. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to mute. <laughs> 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 so, uh, get it out of your systems now <laughs> that's just it's all it, 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 it's I'm, all I'm, downhill clearly I, yeah. I'm just too tired to even laugh I'm like, oh, whatever we just messed up again <laughs> hello and welcome to episode 288 of science on top today is sunday the no it's not sunday the 11th it's sunday the f- wow what are no we? it's sunday yeah, I know, but I, it's not the 11th of February, which is the last time I used this script, so it's now oh, <laughs> Sunday right. the 4th of March. Always a good pickup to make at the start. <laughs> but before you... No, I'm going to say the sentence again because that didn't... <laughs> It's not the words that I even have written here, and it doesn't make any sense. So, let's pretend that never happened. Uh, Luann earlier today was reading this jaundice thing to me this morning because she's the one who sent it to me. And yep. she was reading it to me, and she goes, Oh, I'm really struggling with these words in this word thing. I said, Do you mean article? And she goes, Yeah. <laughs> I can see why you're struggling. <laughs> uh, yes. Go on. And on the... What? Yeah. And on the show... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> this is not me, dude. This is you. <laughs> it's a bit of both. Uh, and today, we're going to be talking about the new moons discovered around Jupiter, the diseases you can catch down a cave, and why bats always seem to be the culprits, and a new blood test for melanobas. Melanobas? I don't know what a melanoba is, but that sounds bad. <laughs> a melanoba is, yeah, a, a very nicely tanned star. That's a melanoba. <laughs> cool. Okay. On today's show, we'll be talking about the genes that are kind of taking over the oceans. We'll be talking about a new planet hunting spacecraft and the accidental enzyme that eats plastic. <clears throat> 
But first, he can help us make this. <laughs> Seriously, he cleared his throat. Yeah, well, the way he did it was like he was reacting to you. It was weird. <laughs> the accidental enzyme that eats plastic. <clears throat> yes. I made that accidental uh, enzyme. I was actually... Yeah. That throat clearing was, was a result of two things. One, I don't have my push to talk thing with me, so I'm just on voice. So I'm sorry. It's just going to be there. But the second thing was, I love the way you rested the show back from me. <laughs> an immediate segue. And then, and then we... Well, and I here we are again. Up. I've got to, I've got to rest again. I'm always resting things. I'm a, I'm resting. A rester. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Anyway. Are we all ready? Mm. I believe so. Cool. We are recording. So uh, we are good to go. Hello and welcome to episode 200. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was like, seriously? <laughs> Charlie Bear, seriously. Seriously, Charlie Bear, come on. Give me a Beautiful break. Beautiful timing. <laughs> Love it. Hang on a second. Like a lot of these so-called golden bullet ideas, you know, we could be creating another entire problem that we haven't even foreseen mm-hmm. yet if we do right. something. Like I'm thinking like cane toad sort of situation, yeah. you know. Golden bullet. Did I use that? I, I, I totally muffed that, didn't I? Did you mean silver bullet? I meant silver, silver bullet. bullet not <laughs> silver oh, that's bullet. a golden bullet. It's even better than a silver bullet. <laughs> we were like talking about James Bond <laughs> before the show and I'm picking gold. That's, that's been on my own mind. <laughs> Uh, uh, that's all right, man. <laughs> I up so many things today. A golden bullet, that wouldn't even rate on, on my <laughs> level. <laughs> yeah. And they've just launched a huge database tracking pharmaceutical companies and where they spend their money. <clears throat> In 2015, <laughs> what? Nothing. I couldn't tell whether you were going to keep going or not. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, there was like a pause. <laughs> I went the whole way going, I've got a crackle in my voice. Do I clear my throat or do I soldier on? You and just I, wait for Joe to interrupt you and solve the problem. No. <laughs> that happened anyway. <laughs> and then made the whole thing worse. And then Marcos sneezed <laughs> and then Charlie Beck coughed. And then... <laughs> oh, <for sake. laughs> it's just a chain reaction. Yeah. Hurtling protons at each other and examining the bits left over. That's given us the Higgs boson and a host of other new subatomical party. I'm going to try that sentence again because I just said subatomical parties. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I want one. I, I want a subatomical party too. In your pants. Wow. Wow. Can we not use the word subatomic and my pants in the same sentence? <laughs> Sorry. (laughs) Oh, wow. Uh, mm. Bacterial sort of colonies called, or microbial colonies called stromatolites, which are essentially like layers of bacteria and other microbes growing on top of each other in um, films. Uh, Just a sec. What's up, Bubba? (gasps) You go and ask Daddy to fix your wedgie. (laughs) Okay. You do it yourself, but uh, mummy, mummy, uh, you got to ask daddy to help. Okay. This should totally stay it's, wait, wait, in the podcast. Wait, 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 do you have, oh, do you have a poo? <laughs> okay, you ask dada. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm not. That was great. <laughs> Um, Fix my wig. This is why we record after bedtime. <laughs> well, no, because the, the terrible thing is she wears nappies, mm. so a wedgie can have really mm. bad consequences. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm generally not in fa- not a fan of wedgies, <laughs> whether they're whether you're wearing in a nappy nappies or, not. or otherwise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but she says she'll fix it herself, and she won't ask Daddy, and that there's no poo in it. So, <laughs> good to know. Excellent. Hopefully everything will be fine. Now, I actually forget what I was even saying. Um, so they're stromatolites. Uh, that you think. They're stromatolites. <laughs> I might just this should be the show title. We asked Daddy. There's no poo in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that will be edited from the actual book. Yeah, yeah. Which will make them workers. more than confused. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry. Go on. Um, stromatolites. These scientists noticed that, well, 
a lot of their soft shell clams were dying. And for in, in Maine, Maine, is that how you pronounce that state? Maine? Maine? I don't know. Maine. We'll call it Maine. Fine. Sorry, any people. It from is Maine definitely Maine. Maine. Definitely Maine. I can, as, uh, as, as someone who's read a lot of Stephen King over the years, it is definitely Maine. <laughs> how, do, but how do you get a pronunciation from Stephen King? I mean, unless you listen to audiobooks, and even they might be wrong. Anyway. I don't know. <laughs> I, just, uh, I know it. Move on. <laughs> you just know it. All right. Fine. All right. Well, let's move on. And from what I understand, a lot of people find sex to be an enjoyable activity. But a study led by a neuroscientist at Bar Ilan University in Israel also quite enjoyed getting it on. No, that, that sounded very wrong. I missed a crucial part of that sentence. <laughs> very, very wrong. <laughs> Jeez, um, I might edit that bit out and start again. Mm-hmm. But a study led by a neuroscientist at Bar Ilan University finds that fruit flies also seem to enjoy getting it on. As we were just chatting before the show, Ed was saying, oh, you know, is letting an infant climb on your back really a sign of love? And I'm like, well, not not whacking it off, I think it is. Like, not saying, get off me. Can we not say not whacking it yeah, off? Yeah, sorry, okay. That's just not, not Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> Lucas. Okay. Yeah. Hey, 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 if I noticed that the listeners will too. It's true. It's, it's very true. Um, right. The horse thing, though, is pretty amazing. Like, mm. I, I wonder if that's just evolved since domestication or if it's, yeah, like you said, it, or if they, because they recognise emotions in each other, there's enough similarities with human faces. But it seems like, it, you know, horses would look quite different to people because pe- you'd think people's facial expressions would be a bit more subtle. You think but, that, but also I was thinking there are a lot of sort of universal behaviours like baring your teeth to show that you're angry or something yeah, I guess, that are yeah. quite widespread, so I don't know. Yeah. They probably yeah, wouldn't. Yeah, I was thinking, it's not like they said, oh, you know, that person looked a bit whimsical, <laughs> like yeah. happy yeah. and angry. They're very – they look yeah. somewhat puzzled, but, you yeah. know. it's um, They're real – yeah. yeah. And also we say yeah. recognised. What we're really sort of doing is yeah. maybe they were cautious about certain behavioural tra- or, or expressions. They weren't necessarily yeah. going, that guy is very annoyed. I should keep my yeah. distance. So it, it's it's cool and it's also not that surprising in the same way, I guess. I don't know. Like so much stuff that we talk about. It's really yeah. cool. But yeah. then, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the magpies uh, uh, and the... Um and the noisy miners apparently are affected by the same um, the same predators because they live in the same <laughs> ecosystem. Sorry, my dog is just going crazy. <laughs> He's just jumped on the bed with muddy paws, and my <laughs> wife has taken oh, him no. to the bathroom to have that dealt with. Is our bedspread ruined or no? Okay, <laughs> bloody dog. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Shane's not here, so I have to provide the dog uh, entertainment. <laughs> dog cameo. Yes. You've worked with uh, Fred Watson before, haven't you? Or it's part of his Star Tours or something, wasn't it? Yes, I have. Very cool. Sorry, Joe, you had a question? Uh, now I've forgotten what my question was. Um, <laughs> no, I was going to ask about um, j- just sort of getting time on the telescopes, um, how, how that works, because I, I remember hearing, um, I can't remember who, uh, an astronomer talking once about the, you know, the, the, the time that sort of the, the competitiveness in terms of getting time on scopes. How, how does that actually work? How much time does one need on a scope in order to be able to to sort of achieve whatever you're wanting to achieve, which I suppose is a bit of a how long of a piece of string question. But... Yeah. Well, um, I'm not really entirely sure how the whole process works because um, I worked at the AAO during summer as an intern, mm-hmm. or not quite as an intern, but as a, on a scholarship. And I got some director time because I was working on an instrument called the Two Degree Field or the 2DF instrument, and uh, that was part of what I was doing. I was running tests on the instrument, making sure it worked well and making a, a really cool thing called a distortion map, which it does cool things. We won't go too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, the, yeah, that was very much used on director time. So the director gets a couple of uh, nights in a year to do things to keep the telescope running. But other than that, I believe it's just like writing a grant to get money, right? Hmm. Time is money right. in this case where you get time okay. on the telescope. 
Ah, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. In which case, highly competitive. <laughs> Very competitive, yes. <laughs> and also, depending on what you want to do is going to affect how long you need the telescope for. If you're doing long exposures, like, I mean, the, the Hubble Deep Field um, shots were taken over a whole day of, uh, uh, of camera work. But uh, mm. if you need to do long exposure sort of photography or imaging of orbital planets, uh, exoplanets for some time, you're going to need quite a lot of time for them. So You really are, yeah. yeah. And if you're doing, like, because a lot of the stuff that's done here is really big surveys as well, mm. So, which is great when using the 2DF instrument. So I'll go a little bit into the 2DF now. <laughs> but 2DF is this uh, big plate where you have 400 optical fibers that you can pick up and place with a robot onto this big plate where the plate sees a whole two-degree field of the night sky, hence why it's called the two-degree field. Mm -hmm. Funny that. Um, <laughs> and But with this instrument, you're able to observe up to 400 objects and the one observation. Wow. Okay. So each of those uh, fiber optics are sort of point at one particular object. All yeah. Right. Okay. So it's creating tremendous amounts of data every single night. Oh, that's that's huge. I mean, the amount of data involved in astronomy these days is, well, astronomical. Uh, yeah, but, a better word. <laughs> but seriously, particularly when you talk about things like the square kilometre array and the mm. amount of data generated and then the computing power to crunch through all of that, it is mind-blowing. That's very, Indeed. very cool. Yeah, as, a, uh, as an amateur astronomer, where, you know, when you see those images from from Hubble and so on, the when you don't have any knowledge of how those images are generated, I know that they are composed of you know multiple images, and I know that they are uh, you know sometimes it's just sometimes it's artist renderings that you're looking at, mm. but just j just really sort of getting a better understanding of what actually goes into being able to see some of the images that are released by NASA and so on. Uh, it helps you get a better understanding of, um, you know, why we can't see things with the naked eye. Mm. Just, just the the differences in terms of the the um, the wavelengths of light and what you can and can't see. It's something mm. that I struggle to understand. <laughs> <laughs> and the colours as well. Like I keep mm. wanting to see the bands of Jupiter and the colours and uh, of Saturn and everything. And it's never quite as impressive through a telescope as on those images of stacked. That, that being uh, said, when, when I got my very first scope, which was, you know, it, it, it's just a, a tiny little little thing and, you know, the very first time I looked through it and the first thing I saw was um, the moons of Jupiter, just that mm -hmm. feeling of knowing that those that I was looking at those moons and that those, you know, those photons of light were, 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 were just travelling to me that I could see those mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a way I'd never seen before, even though my expectations that I'd look through the scope and see that, you know, I expected I'd see the red spot. I expected I'd see detail. <laughs> I had no idea. I was, I was so naive, but it was still <laughs> completely exhilarating. Oh, that's so wonderful to hear because there's, there's a, no, I won't say a lot of people, but a few people do come to Sydney Observatory expecting to see what you see from Hubble. And they're very mm, disappointed mm. because, <laughs> I mean, we have a telescope that's a quarter or less the size of the Hubble Space Telescope. Plus, we have the atmosphere to deal with as well. Mm. So, yeah, we, it's not going to be that great. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's important to actually when you when you look through a scope, not to sort of not to actually think about oh I'm going to see this incredible um, you know the uh, uh, I don't know an, an incredible nebula or or the rings of Saturn in full color or something like that. I think mm. if you actually just try and engage with um, the distance from you and how much, uh, how vast things are for me, that's what really gives that me that feeling of exhilaration of the fact that, um, it, that I'm seeing something with my, with my eyes that mm. otherwise is just in my imagination and that, and that I just find wonderful. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. I like sort of doing the, the calculations of if I'm looking at Jupiter, that light has gone from the sun to Jupiter in about 16 hours and then from Jupiter to Earth in another 12 hours or something and adding all that up just uh, gives a better sense of the of the distance and the magnitude of what you're seeing. Mm. But this talk of telescopes actually makes me wonder, did the first Australians have use of tools or anything like that? Have they, was, is there any uh, evidence of using rudimentary telescopes or anything like that or is that just not ever on the cards? 
not telescopes, at least not that we've uh, discovered so far or seen mm-hmm. so far, but there is this great uh, rock, or not formation, but a uh, placement of rocks in Victoria near Melbourne somewhere. Yes. It's, um, I forget what it's called, but it's this kind of cone arrangement or triangle arrangement where the middle line of, there's a line down the middle of the triangle as well, where the middle line of rocks points to where the sun rises or sets, depending on which way you look at it, um, on the equinox, the days of the equinox. Mm-hmm. And then on the, other, on the sides, you have the solstices. So it's a Stonehenge before Stonehenge. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. It's so cool. Uh, yeah, it's off uh, Little River um, at Mount Rothwell uh, in Victoria. Uh, I just Someone actually sent me a link to this the other day, which is why it... Uh, uh, sparked a neuron when you mentioned it um, mm. I'm not even going to try pronouncing the name of it because I will butcher it and that will be <laughs> awkward and embarrassing because we've got someone who actually I'm guessing speaks some Aboriginal language Do a you? little bit, yeah. I'm learning I'm learning still so they didn't just find the remnants of dead cells, they also found metabolising cells in this really arid soil that, of which there is you know, very little input of energy or water or otherwise so it raises interesting questions about the, this well the, how, how what was that? That was my alarm telling me that I've got science on top starting in ten minutes. <laughs> um, well, that alarm because we used to record awesome. at eight thirty. But anyway, good job, good job there, alarm done well, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it's. Not to mention, not to mention noisy miners. I hate those. Oh my god! I know, but they're. I despise them. Oh. Yeah. I, I thought they were. I, I got. Confu- I got them confused with the Indian miners, or you know the. the I think you call it common miner now. Sorry. I think they're now common miners, not Indian. Yeah. Miners. Yeah. Well, Do okay, they even sorry. come from yeah, here? Com- oh, anyway. Is that a politically incorrect thing to say, Indian miner? Is it's it? not anymore. Yeah, no, sorry. But it's, it's how I've kn- okay. known them. It's how I knew them. Yeah, I, it's how yeah. I've always known them too. Yeah, yeah the noisy miners um, are the grey ones, aren't they? With the they're, sharp they're gray. Yeah, they're grey and they've got like um, uh, sort of like black. They look, look like a black eyeshadow with yellow, big yellow eyes, or I think, or red eyes. I think sorry. Whereas the the, the common miners are like actually quite attractive birds, like very dark brown plumage and um yellow beaks and they, they're quite pretty but they're both, they're both awful birds <laughs> and, uh, the, yeah, the noisy miners swoop my dog all the time Aww. even, even Aww. now it's ridiculous yeah. alright well stay tuned next week for more on which birds we hate <laughs> but uh, but moving on and, and just apropos of nothing but well sort of apropos of this I this gives me heart to know that this sort of amazing kind of technicality and science is still being done in a country where a reality television star is the president. I mean, I know, I know, I it has nothing to do with this. But... So you brought that Cheeto up. Yeah. No, 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 no. But, 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 but honestly, I, I can imagine explain this to the little orangutan and him just going, <laughs> "What? I don't understand. Nah, cancel it. Hell with that." You know, I, I can just imagine him, him just not grasping and going, "What's the point of this? Cancel it." So I'm glad no one told yeah. him about it because otherwise, I'm sure he would have cancelled it. Maybe I don't know. I mean, he <laughs> likes <laughs> bragging rights, right? Though, so it does seem that he likes. Yeah, to but brag but, but, but he wouldn't be able to explain this. No, and that would uh. frustrate him. So I think he just on on a for that reason alone, he would say, "No, nah, hell with this," and he'd probably cut. We have the best just orbits. Our orbits are all the best. <laughs> We, we could go down a very dark spiral in when we look at uh, who he's appointed as the NASA administrator and things like that. But yeah. I think we should We're just gonna bounce we'll keep it light. We're going to bounce past. We're going to pretend uh, that everything is good. Yeah. Everything's good and we're happy. That's what we're going to pretend at this point. All right. Cool. Yeah. Let's move on. I was talking Shane, to a satellite talk- named Tess and she was saying... <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh... Let's not go down that particular road, please. <laughs> I think. Oh, Ed, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Your editing of this one is going to be a pain. No, he's not. He's not editing. No, Mr. That. President. That was a porn star named Tess, and she's suddenly one hundred thirty thousand dollars richer. We don't know why. <laughs> but I'm a germaphobe. Okay. So. <laughs> Can we move the fuck on, yeah, please? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, you may. So we, we can, I think one of the authors of this said, you know, certainly we know that whatever these people, oh, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> I'm at my mum's house just to check. Ah, okay. <laughs> So, Peter, how about them Mets? Oh, uh, yep. I've got that. Yep. Really? How did you lose so, all that? Oh. I, I don't know. Like... It, it, just, it just completely vanished, so I, I didn't have anything at all. Okay. Uh, Penny, oh, you good? Is everything okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, That's right. I'm at my mum's house, and obviously I turned my phone on silent with the <laughs> landline. <laughs> There's a landline. Who uses a landline? <laughs> Your mum. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just had had a, had a landline issue. In fact, my uh, I got a, a friend of mine from America who's the only person who ever calls on my landline mm. and, and calls like once every year. Called me and said, "I got some weird message when I tried to call you," and and I checked my landline and it's been not working for I don't know how long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Telstra, I said to Telstra, it's not working. But we keep it because it, it is our alarm monitoring system goes yeah, out on that, of course, on that yeah. line. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. And so, sure. and of course, the, the alarm people, I rang them and they went, oh, yeah, it's not working. Said, oh, oh, well, what's the- We could have told Yeah, thanks, that- thanks for telling me. Yeah, good, good monitoring service there. Yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. Mm. Mm. Um, um, but now I can hear you again. So, But yeah. I didn't hear anything that Penny said. I heard her start to talk and then that was it. Oh, okay. Uh, That's when the phone rang and she stopped talking. Oh, uh, I tried to. I, I, I actually left to try and get my mum to answer the phone. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's all good now. Um, we're not, we're not going to get a whole lot of really cool pictures from this one. There, there is an imaging instrument on it, but uh, um, basically it's used for um, taking wide view images of the uh, of the chronosphere and trying to figure out what it, how it's going to approach and so forth. So, so it won't be like a Cassini sort of thing with a with a whole lot of really beautiful imagery for years and years. It'll all be all overexposed and everything because it's right at the sun. But yeah, no, that was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of this is I get to edit out my own you bad do. jokes. Yes. <laughs> All right, Helen, let's start with some astro geophysics. <clears throat> I'm going to try and say that again without my voice breaking. <clears throat> well, Helen, let's start with some astro geophysics, shall we? But Penny, what's that got to do with epidemic? Ep- Gonna say that again because I almost said yep. epidermis, and that's a very different thing. So different. But Penny, what's that got to do with epidemiology? They could not say that this cancer had metastasized, um, or at least. Hang on, let me just go back and check this. Thank God for mm-hmm. editing. Uh, <laughs> la 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 la. Oh, didn't we tell you? Now this is going out live. Uh, oh yeah, 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 everyone's still in. Sure. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> but where is it? Um, ah, here we go. But just last week, SpaceX successfully launched NASA's replacement for the Kepler planet hunting spacecraft. Lucas, tell us all about TESS. Did, did it launch? Did it actually launch? Because last, yeah. last I was reading is that they delayed it again. Um, from. Um, 70% sure it did. Should we maybe confirm this before we continue yeah. recording mm. this thing? Because Phil Plate says, update, uh, update number two, April 18th, the launch window opens tonight, blah, blah, blah. It's been uh, blah, 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 blah. I've got a Nars Technica article saying NASA's new planet finder is in space. Now what? Okay, that's a good time. Okay, excellent. <laughs> so <laughs> just wipe this little part of our conversation from... Launched on Wednesday carrying a NASA spacecraft. So, cool. Yeah. Cool. Consider it edited. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I get, like you, Ed, I was reading about how humans are, like, hyper-cooperative and mm-hmm. ultra-cooperative. I'm thinking, really? What the <laughs> are you on? Like, <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, look, here we are cooperating over bloody... Sorry. Here <laughs> we are, co- <laughs> you know, cooperating over the internet. We can't even see each other and... Yeah. I've never even met Mick, I think. So, you know. No. I'm looking forward to the fashions. Ah. 
got any blacker? My black Remember that ad? Yeah. Was there an ad like in the 90s for black sneakers or something and there was like got any blacker? Oh, uh, that rings a baby uh, bell. Anyway. Anyway. I might edit that out because that's very obscure. <laughs> Yeah. Do you think we may one day have some sort of a universal definition of what an organ is and maybe we'll you know, decide that the pancreas is no longer an organ or something and lots of kids will be upset and writing in like they did with Pluto? I'm sorry, pancreas. It's a pretty cool organ. Why did you pick on the pancreas? I was thinking surely the pancreas is pretty safe. Like there's other lesser yeah, exactly. you know, useful like, organs. Like you know. skin. They say the skin is an organ mm. and... So a lot of people is just a covering, surely. But it does stuff. Like it does more than just cover. It's not mm. just a bag. So is- and the pancreas is pretty cool because it's like the only one that is both um, uh, endocrine and exocrine. Yeah, Ed. Yeah, I've often thought that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, I was just thinking. I was just thinking Rick and Morty and pirates of the pancreas. I, was, I don't know. Don't worry. That's, okay. You know, not was, familiar with it, but sounds not, not Rick and Morty. Oh dear. Okay. So we will all wait while everyone goes and, and YouTubes that. It'll, you'll be there for a while. Okay. <laughs> you'll start a YouTube spiral. It would not be true. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> However, the mag, oh, what's it called? The magnificent, um, oh, shit. What's the bird's name? Help me, help me. I'm looking, I'm looking. <laughs> I was just—I was going to say "magnificent bird of paradise," but it's not. It's the superb bird of paradise and the magnificent rifle bird. And so I was interested to read that um, Corellas are really making a comeback. A comeback. Um, so the Corella, did you just say comeback? I said comeback because I was about to talk about its beak. It's a delightfully <laughs> Freudian slip. Oh, I meant to say comeback. Oh dear God. <laughs> The image is in my head now. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh. oh sorry. <laughs> I heard it. I thought I'm going to let it slip. I think there's no need to dwell on this. And the then bloody like, Lucas is here to say something. You know what? Just keep going. <laughs> anyway, so they're making a comeback. They're making a comeback. Um. I was watching a. Um, an episode. I, I was on a plane th- this afternoon, coming back from Hobart, and I was watching an episode of, um, you know, that. Have you seen the Seinfeld show, The Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee? Have either mm-hmm. seen it? Yeah, yeah. I've yep. I've been devouring them lately because I, I was a latecomer to the show, and um, and there, there was an episode where Jerry was was driving around with with Barack Obama in the car at, on at the White House, mm-hmm. and I, I was like, on one hand, I was like, this is funny. I was enjoying it, and I was. You know, enjoying the discussion, but I also just felt this profound sadness um, uh, of, of like that's and that's gone now. That's we no longer have yeah. someone like that in the in the Oval Office, and I felt the same as as when you just said that about the the, the oceans warming. That was kind of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, <Yeah. laughs> brought everything down, uh, yeah. which I quite like. Um, I was going to say something else. Shit. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't matter. What was I, what was I going to say? I, I don't oh, know. Oh, man. Yeah, no, neither do I. Shoot. Nah. Tell me a lengthening or t- tell me a shortening has been observed as you age. Hmm. And that, yeah. Yeah, so they're telling me is they're, they're basically like the caps on the NEV chromosomes and they, and it's been, there's been a, like a, a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Oh, fuck me. <laughs> He's not fucking working for me. Ah, I sorry, can't yeah. even help you. I don't know where you're going. <laughs> no, no, that's right. No, there has been a relationship noted between ageing and telomere shortening. Insanely far away. No. Insanely <laughs> far away. Did we have anyone actually come back to us about... Oh, no, that hasn't aired no, yet, has it? put that out yet, no. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Ed, what bloody century are you in? We don't air. Well, I guess we do. Wi-Fi. Anyway, on tangent. Oh, you've just come up with a great idea for a product. We should have a an AI that scans the terms and conditions of what you're about to sign up for <laughs> and lets you know if there's anything that's a concern for privacy. That's a hey, great that's idea. That's pretty good. That's like mm. a subset of the summarization tab. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Be I, right back. Uh, are you actually? Be right back. Going to develop a system. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you were leaving the podcast. You got to quickly go and do something. <laughs> or, <go>. Wait, what? <laughs> Uh, I would pay for that. I would definitely pay for that. Can't be asked making it, but I'd pay for it. Do you know all the time, for all the years I've known about Wombat Poo, I have never once mm. wondered how. I was just like, oh, yeah, it's square. Of course. Moving on. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's not the sort of thing that makes you think, but do they have square anuses? I, I don't never know. Thought, <laughs> I would never have, like, I mean, I guess that says more about my lack of kind of Imagination. I just never would have. Um, Your lack of interest in anus. Lack of interest in what that anus. You have a healthy lack of interest in anus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you know who has a, quite a, an interest in in wombat poo, and I guess by extension their anuses, is Dr. Pamela Gay, who stayed out here recently and was on a show with us. Astronomer, um, Dr. Pamela yes, Gay. Yes, that's right. Okay. Yes, she she stayed. <laughs> Well, she stayed with me, and um, one of the things she really wanted to And you to live out in the country in a magic faraway tree in a mountain. We do, and we have wombats. We have wombats okay. here. Um, uh, and, you know, we've got various fauna, and uh, and Pamela was quite keen to find, to, to actually photograph wombat poo um, for reasons that <laughs> are, are hers. And, uh, but anyway, we did see wombats, but we didn't see their pooing, so... Uh, she did get to photograph a wombat uh, just standing on the street, just down on my house. Still just cute. Below my house. But it wasn't pooing, it was scratching. Poor thing had mange. So, yeah. Ah. So, there you go. Little tidbit for you. <laughs> cool story, bro. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Tangent, I feel I don't see very many blackbirds around. Really? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> is it because of their camouflage? Mm, I think it's just because of those stupid common miners that are yeah. really annoying. But anyway, a lot of birds. Blackbirds. Blackbirds. A lot of blackbirds. That's very uh, interesting. I don't know. I, we just get miners and wattlebirds, which are not oh. the most pleasant birds. Anyway, um, but they're not blackbirds. Are not that black. And the idea was that you you and and it does mention this in the New York Times article that. Um, if you, Lucas, hello. Sorry, I forgot. I got to keep holding my mouth. Skype's down. way uh, better than this <laughs> shit. <laughs> I had to keep holding my mouth down, so I, I'm actually I reached up with my hand to to <laughs> hold, hold my head between my hand and the the sun, and uh, which is okay. not in my darkened room at night. Anyway, um, <laughs> no. Yeah. So, so um, yeah. Oh, God. Um, now, Lucas, uh, I don't know if you should disconnect and then come back in or something because you've just gotten horribly Cylon-y to Am the point where we can't actually dolphin? understand but you. But with a really jaunty kind of rhythm <laughs> to it, like it's kind of amusing. I don't know what I you're can, saying, uh... but it sounds funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give me a moment. I'll see if I can uh, if I can get some better coverage here. Hang on a second. I'll, uh, if I drop out, I'll just rejoin. Hang on a sec. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> You're right. on 4G now. I am on the 4Gs. I'm all, all the Gs. <laughs> <clears throat> Much better. Cool. Well, hopefully uh, your local recording got all your witty <laughs> jokes. Then. <laughs> and then us going, no, they weren't witty, oh, that so sounds like a funny joke. <laughs> yeah. This sounds like the right time to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, when I made the comment about the Sharknado and there was absolute silence for three <laughs> solid seconds, I thought, are you guys, are you thinking, what the fuck is he <laughs> talking about? Or are you... I'm, I'm familiar like, with that the That doesn't Sharknado deserve franchise. a laugh. It doesn't deserve a response we're just going to move on <laughs> we're just going to pretend that didn't happen <laughs> so um so the, the short version of this answer the the uh the, the too long didn't read out version is okay that's it, not, are you there yeah yeah that was it don't know <laughs> oh. we didn't hear the don't know we just heard this out. method of silence yeah, like, the oh, short answer oh. is and then nothing it's like oh. the hell that's not an answer the short answer is don't know okay. um, i can't answer your question 
Now let's take a look at taxonomy, which can be a little complicated depending on which system of classification you get. But for the most part, all life can be divided up into three domains, archaea, bacteria, so-called single-celled organisms with no nucleus, and the fun one, eukarya, the multicellular life, the cells with nuclei and membranes. And if you start classifying those eukaryotes, you get, depending on which system you're using, five kingdoms. You get animals, plants, fungi, and protista and monera, which are single-celled organisms. And as you can imagine, all those kingdoms are... Yeah, I got it wrong. are actually bacteria. So there's right. four this is, kingdoms. <laughs> Sorry. This is what I say. It gets complicated. So protista and protista aren't always single-celled, but they are definitely not plants, animals, or fungi. Yep. See, this is what I meant when I said it's confusing depending know, on which I'm system sorry. you use. No, 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 because what I said is both right and wrong depending on which system you use. Um, and I blame Wikipedia for all of that. But Monera and Protist uh, are different uh, kingdoms. Yeah, so, but th- so Monera <laughs> is what would encompass like the bacteria and yep. archaebacteria, but it definitely doesn't belong in the eukarya. Like the eukarya is a big super king, like a big super group domain, which encompasses those plants, animals, fungi, and protists. Yeah, I... uh, Should we start again? (laughs) Yeah, but I don't know how. See, this is the problem that I had, and this is why I needed the extra time, is I don't know how to introduce this story without explaining the different kingdoms and domains. I can explain the different kingdoms. Fine. What? What are you? Some kind of science teacher? It's, it's like it's, it's almost <laughs> like it's my job. <laughs> it's like I'm paid money to do this. Oh God! I'm trying at, to mansplain at, at a, at a level that is science to a science teacher. Okay. No, it is confusing because right. there are lots of yeah. I need to do some sort of an introduction and throw to you, but all right. Do you want to say like three domains? But what else yeah, is yeah. going on? Yeah. All right being built in front of the, the glaciers. I'm what thinking the pro- ice wall from Game of Thrones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which apparently, you know, just a single freaking dragon can take that down. <laughs> so, so great, was it? Um, sorry, Spoiler was that spoilers? <laughs> we, spoilers? Has it been long enough? I don't know. Now I'm worried. Uh, I apologise if uh, maybe we should have a Game of Thrones spoiler thing at the beginning. Ah, oh, these things you have to think about in the modern world. <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, so the Carolina Reaper has a Scoville uh, level of 2.2 million. (laughs) As of September 2017, the (laughs) hottest chili pepper known is the Pepper X, which has a reported Scoville scale of 3.18 million units, almost a million more units than that. So as of, sorry, what was the date of that that testing? September 2017. Okay, now I'm reading a 2018 one and they're saying that the Pepper X hadn't been... A pepper claiming to be twice as hot as the Carolina Reaper's surface and this might have more in it. However, we we're still waiting to see the official test results for that. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I'm just shocked that someone hasn't updated this one particular Wikipedia article. That is <laughs> devastating and has shaken my belief in, in Wikipedia to the core. <laughs> Yeah, at least one of the people in those chili wars. You'd think they'd be on there. <laughs> My chili's the hottest. Yeah, on their deathbed with yeah. their type as they pass yeah. away. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> and, you, and you know, the other thing about chilies too, I mean, not all chilies, but there, it, it is a well-known fact of chilies that it, the heat doesn't actually stop at the top if you get my drift. Yeah, yeah, no, we do. I'm oh, totally I see. Do. It's all the way through. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I've so I've experienced so wherever, that. wherever the nerve endings are, mm, mm. Yes. the heat goes. Okay. The heat goes. Heat go. Ring of fire. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. And on that happy note, <laughs> I had some wonderful chili crab in Singapore once, and uh, and and I was sharing a hotel room with someone. It didn't go well for them or me, for that matter. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> okay. Well, before we get any more graphic, I think we should call the end of the show there. And I think that's our show. Oh, wait. No, we did the... Fuck. 
No, we did the fungus. I know. The fungus is done. <laughs> but I had this reminder at the end, you know, we might be doing that. And, you know, it's all right. I get to edit all that out. Woohoo. And we're very grateful to all the listeners who help us out. What was that? that? I don't know. It's Jezebel walking on the hard floor. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I was, was going to ask if it was Charlie Bear. But... No, no, she was just because, yes. Yeah, so. Is that that sensitive, my microphone? Mm-hmm. God. I could hear it. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Tickets are on sale now for the Astronomy Revolution talk by Dr. Pamela Gay, as well as a question and answer session and a live recording of Science on Top. That's on Wednesday, the 10th of October in Melbourne, Australia. Tickets At what cost, time? Uh, Sorry, I've missed you blow, but, uh, 7 p.m. I think. Cool. Don't put, quote me on that one. Why are you well, asking the, me questions on the spot that I don't have? Well, really? because I'm curious. <laughs> it's like, do I need to take leave to be there? No, the 7 p.m. should be all right. All right. Um, let me let me just triple check that. No, I really screwed you. You have so absolutely fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd know the time, so it didn't occur to me. That well, it turns out I was Good right. Question, it is Mike, 7 o'clock. 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is 7. It is 7 o'clock. I just checked. And that's our show. Uh, our, no, fuck it. <laughs> and our... <laughs> Sounded fine. So you said no fuck. <laughs> it did, but I think I should actually thank him for that as well. Get in touch with us on social media. And if you can, can you please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts? Or any other podcast reviewing place that's not yeah. Apple. I mean, yeah. <laughs> True. Apple is still the, the big one that gets the most uh, attention, but absolutely anywhere where you listen to this, you should leave some comments. Or you can just post and tell me a really good podcast app to use. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th- I think that the I think the the response has been fairly clear on that one. Yes. That pocket cast yes. is the yep. way to go. Yeah, <laughs> that's Don't not you. an endorsed comment, by the no, way. No, no. I'm getting it out anyway. No, fine, whatever. <laughs> you can say whatever you like, really. It's just, <laughs> no one's going to listen. No, no one's going to hear it. Wow, just talking to a void. Thanks, everyone. We'll be back again next week, putting science on top of the agenda. Join us then. I slurred my words a lot at the end there. I was going very fast. I but we got did there. not notice. <laughs> I, I felt that I really just did not do that um, Mayan story any justice because I, when you threw to me, I kind of – the, the intro bit was the most interesting like – you, oh, no. you know what I mean? You covered the stuff that was really the essence of the story and I'm thinking, oh, and I'm scared. It's really hard to do an intro that it hooks people away. in yeah. Yeah. but doesn't – do all the story. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry about that. I stole your thinking, thunder. I'm not sure what else I can say. And I was remember, I was thinking, I know there was something about moving water around, but I couldn't quite remember whether they were aqueducts or or just sort of plumbing uh, or <laughs> what they were. It's like, oh, man, what can I say about this other than it's so cool? Isn't it cool? Don't you think it's cool? It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You, you don't have to give a complete breakdown of the entire story. If you pique someone's interest and they then go and check out the link, well, then yeah, that's yeah. good. That was a good show. My it mind was, was... was blown three times. Firstly, with the um, the concept of our solar system could have planets from another solar system early on. Mm. Then with the fact that we've found water on another planet and all that sort of stuff. That's very cool. And also the fact that Penny can explain taxonomy so damn well. <laughs> That was a <laughs> really effort, good job. Effort, was that all right? I felt like I was crapping on, but... Not it's at nice all. when no, there's something that's actually like my job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you did well. I mean, I still got lost a bit, but it was still better than my attempt, which was A, wrong and B, confusing. And If I had had a diagram, well. I guarantee yeah. Yeah. you would not have been lost, yeah. especially if you did your homework. Yeah, but no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining me today, Shane, Penny, and Lewis. Lucas? Lewis. I'm Lewis. Ma- fuck it. I'm doing it again. Lewis. Who the hell is Lewis? <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll be back again next week, putting science on top of the agenda. Join us then. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, it's actually more fun when we fuck things up. <laughs> oh, yeah, <definitely. laughs> oh, man. Lewis? Lewis? <laughs>